To begin using the Text Instruments BA2 Plus Financial Calculator, we turn it on and we see that this calculator currently is only showing two digits past the decimal point. We want to fix that as, long, as well as a few other things before we get into our problems. I want to see more digits than just two places. So I'm going to press the second button up here in the upper left and then press the decimal button which above that says format. And we see that it says DEC for decimal equals two because it's only showing us two places. I want to see as many uh, places as possible so I'm going to choose eight and then enter and now we see many more digits past the decimal point when I clear this out. Uh, therefore, there you will be able to control how much you round. A few other things to check for when you begin is that it is set to one period per year. So I'm going to press the second button and then this button here where it says I slash Y but above it it says P slash Y. That's telling us that the period per year right now is set to one. That is what we want one period per year. And we, I recommend you do that for all problems, even when you have a problem that actually does have more than one period per year. If it doesn't show you one period per year, you'll just press one and then enter and it will be stored there as one period per year. And that it'll just remember that. Finally, you want to make sure that the window doesn't have any letters in it. Particularly, we do not want to see the letters BGN, which stands for begin. Let me show you what it would look like if the window does say BGN. So we see now that it says BGN at the top. This is a problem if you don't uh, take that out because almost all of our finance problems are assuming that cash flows occur at the end of a period, not the beginning of the period. And this BGN assumes the opposite. It would say that the cash flows are defined at the beginning of every period. We want it to be defined as, the, as uh, at the end of every period. So to get rid of the BGN, you would press the second button and press PMT where we see BGN at the top. And then you have to set it. See, so that's why it says set at the top. So we press second and then enter where it says set on top. And now it's changed to end. And we see that the BGN letters have gone away. Right, so after making sure that you can see the decimal, all the decimals possible, all the digits past the decimal possible, the periods are set to one period per year, and there's no BGN in the screen, we're ready to do our problems. The first kind of problem I want to show you is using this third row here. This stands for number of periods, interest rate, present value, payment, and future value. If I want to compute any one of these five, I'm going to enter the arguments and then solve for what's left. So if I have a problem where I am saving for five years, I'm going to press five and then N. So you press the number and then where you want that stored. And uh, we're assuming that the interest rate is 10%. So I'll put 10 and I'll store that as the interest rate. And let's suppose my account starts with $100. So I'm going to put in 100 and then press PV for present value. Because I'm starting out using a or doing a lump sum problem, there is no repeated cash flow in the future. The PMT uh, value for payment would be for repeated cash flows. Since the problem I'm doing right now doesn't involve that, I want to make sure that there's a zero stored for PMT. That's the default value. And I'm solving for the future value. So how much I would have in my account in five years. So I'm going to use the FV button for future value, but I can't just press FV. I have to tell the calculator I want it to compute FV, so I'm going to press the CPT button for compute, and then FV. And then it gives me the future value with a negative in front of it. So the future value of the $100 in five years at 10% is $161.05. The calculator will always put in the opposite sign 
whenever you uh, for whatever cash flow you're solving for. And you just need to know that you can drop that sign. The future value of a positive number has to be positive. And you know, this will be explained more in your finance classes uh, with regard to why the calculator wants to put that negative sign in there. Uh, it is important to recognize that that's how the calculator thinks. And if you were to solve for a value like the interest rate or number of periods where you would have to put in both the present value and the future value, um, then one of them would have to be negative and the other positive or else it won't give an answer. Um, and if you want to make sure that your um, everything is cleared out when you do your next problem, you can press second and then clear TVM, uh, which is above the TV button. Second, clear TVM. And uh, then you see that as I press all the other buttons, nothing is stored in there. Next, I want to address how you would calculate the present value of a stream of cash flows particularly one that doesn't have to follow any pattern. This is sometimes called the uneven cash flow stream problem, or as I prefer, general cash flow stream problem. To handle that kind of problem, I need to use the cash flow register, so that's CF there. Now, when I start, I may have values left in from a previous problem, and I want to make sure that nothing from a previous problem is left in there, so to Make sure it's clear. As you can see, indeed, there was a value. Uh, I'm going to press CF and then clear everything out in the cash flow register by pressing second and then the clear work button at the bottom there. And now everything is uh, starts out fresh. Let's suppose that my problem has negative 100 as the first cash flow. So I'm gonna put in 100, then the plus minus button and then enter. So now negative 100 is stored as the cash flow at period zero. Press the down arrow key to go to the next cash flow period. So let's suppose period one cash flow is 50. So I'll put in 50 and enter. Down arrow key. The next uh, thing we see is F1. Notice it doesn't say C for cash flow. This means the number of times that that cash flow appears uh, successively. Now in the problem I'm doing, the $50 is in just period one, it's not repeated after that. So I do want it to be at value, I do want the value for F1 to be one. And I recommend as you start out, you always leave F, the F values at one, and if you need to, uh, you can repeat the cash flows just so you don't lose count of where you are. Let's say the next cash flow is 75. So I'm gonna put in 75 and enter, down arrow key. And again, we see the frequency will be just one, leave that alone, down arrow key to the third cash flow. And let's say the last cash flow is 120. So I'll put in 120, enter, and then down arrow key to make sure that everything is um, stored. And again, we see F3 uh, is equal to one. Now to get the net present value, I need to press the NPV button. Now when I press the NPV button, the uh, thing it asks is what is the interest rate to calculate the net present value? Let's suppose that in this problem, we want the interest rate to be seven and enter, and that will be stored, let me try again. I'll press seven enter, and now that's stored as the interest rate. Let's go down. Then I press the down arrow, notice I press the down arrow key. Then it says NPV equals zero. Well, it uh, doesn't mean that the net present value of what we put in is zero. The calculator actually wants you to tell it you do want the net present value. Um, I don't think that makes a whole lot of sense. I mean, that's the whole reason why you pressed NPV, but it makes you do this nevertheless. So you have to press the CPT button at this point to say compute it. So when you tell the calculator, yes, I pressed NPV because I want you to compute the NPV, uh, we find out that it is $110.19. Okay. 
Now, lastly, I want to calculate the um, internal rate of return of a cash flow stream. The, now, the nice thing about this calculator is that these cash flows are stored in, here in the cash flow register. So I don't need to re-enter the numbers. If I wanted to get the internal rate of return of the same cash flows, all I have to do is go over and press the IRR button, and I have to press the compute, and it tells me that the IRR of this problem is 51.64%. And if you started this problem fresh and you hadn't done NPV already, remember the steps you would have to, sorry, you, go to the, you would have to go to the cash flow register, you would have to clear everything out by doing second clear work, and then you would start over, enter the cash flows, and then press the IRR button, and then compute.